Welcome to the State Road 401 Bridge Replacement Project Development and Environment or PD&E Study Public Hearing. Financial Project ID or FPID number 444787-1. Efficient Transportation Decision Making or ETDM number 14397. The environmental review, consultation, and other actions required by applicable federal environmental laws for this project are being or have been carried out by FDOT pursuant to 23 USC and 327 and memorandum of understanding dated May 26, 2022 and executed by FHWA and FDOT. The FDOT Office of Environmental Management in Tallahassee is the approving authority. This hearing is being conducted in a hybrid format to provide multiple ways for the public to receive information about the project and provide input. This hearing is being conducted virtually through GoToWebinar and over the phone on Tuesday, January 31st, 2023, and in person on Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. A copy of the presentation is available on the project webpage at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 444787-1. The purpose of tonight's public hearing is to share information with the public about the proposed improvement, its conceptual design, all alternatives under study, and the potential beneficial and adverse social, economic, and environmental impacts upon the community. The public hearing also serves as an official forum, providing an opportunity for members of the public to express their opinions regarding the project. The three primary components of tonight's hearing are, first, the open house, which occurred prior to this presentation, where you were invited to view the project displays and for those attending in person to speak directly with the project team and provide your comments in writing or to the court reporter. Second, this presentation, which will explain the project purpose and need, study alternatives, potential impacts, and proposed methods to mitigate the adverse project impacts. Third, a formal comment period following this presentation, where you will have the opportunity to provide oral statements at the microphone or in writing or for those attending in person, you may provide your comments directly to the court reporter. This public hearing was advertised and is being conducted in accordance with state and federal requirements, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Public participation is solicited without regard to race, color, national origin, age, sex, religion, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns about Title VI may do so by contacting Melissa McKinney, FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator, by mail at 719 South Woodland Boulevard, Mail Station 501, Deland, Florida, 327-20-6834, by phone at 386 943-5077 or email at melissa.mckinney at dot.state.fl.us spelled m-e-l-i-s-s-a dot m-c-k-i-n-n-e-y at d-o-t dot state dot f-l dot u-s you may also contact the state Title VI coordinator, Stefan Kulakowski, by mail at 605 Swanee Street, Mail Station 65, Tallahassee, Florida, 32399-0450, by phone at 850-414-4742, or email at stefan dot k u l a k o w s k i at d o t dot state dot f l dot u s 
All inquiries or complaints will be handled according to FDOT procedures and in a prompt and courteous manner. This information is shown on a sign at the in-person location, on the project website, and in the hearing notifications. The public hearing was advertised consistent with the federal and state requirements shown on this slide. This public hearing was advertised in the Florida Administrative Register on FDOT's Public Notices website and project webpage on the Florida Today newspaper and on social media. In addition, adjacent property owners, interested individuals, elected and appointed officials, and government agencies were also notified about this public hearing. Project documents are available for viewing during business hours through February 11th, 2023 at the Cape Canaveral Public Library. The project documents are also available on the project website at www.cflroads.com forward slash project forward slash 444787-1. A PD&E study is a blending of engineering, environmental assessments, and public involvement activities. The process is used by engineers and planners to determine the location and conceptual design of the preferred roadway improvements. The study evaluations show the associated social, economic, and environmental effects of the improvements, in addition to providing viable engineering and transportation solutions. If the PD&E study results in a build alternative selection, the project may proceed to the next phase, which is the design phase. The right-of-way phase typically involves acquisition of any necessary right-of-way. Right-of-way acquisition is not anticipated for this project. The project would be built during the construction phase. Currently, the construction phase is unfunded. Public input and information received at the public information meeting and this public hearing will be taken into consideration for this study. This project is within the jurisdiction of the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization, TPO. The State Road 401 draw bridges across the Canaveral Barge Canal at Port Canaveral in Brevard County. The limits of this study are State Road 401 from the State Road 528 interchange to approximately 1,000 feet north of the Canaveral Barge Canal. The port sits at the junction of Florida's main north, south, and east-west corridors. As the second busiest cruise port in the world, it creates opportunities for trade, tourism, and development, which serves Brevard County and the state of Florida with an economic impact to the state of $3.9 billion and 33,000 jobs. Port Canaveral supplies critical fuel to the central Florida region and beyond and it is strategic location is critical for the support of military missions and commercial space enterprises. The purpose of this study is to evaluate improvements to or replacement of the existing State Road 401 bascule bridges or draw bridges over the Canaveral Barge Canal. The department is developing and analyzing alternatives for improving the bridges to address access, future mobility, congestion, and safety needs. This project may also improve system linkage and modal interrelationships by providing access to strategic and national assets. State Road 401 not only provides a vital connection to Port Canaveral's operations, including major crews and cargo terminals, the roadway is part of the strategic intermodal system connector and strategic highway network, or STRANET. STRANET is a designation given to roads that provide defense access, continuity, and emergency capabilities for movements of personnel and equipment in both peace and war. Traffic conditions within the study limits are characterized by a high percentage of truck traffic due to nearby cargo, freight, and industrial tenants on the north side of the port. Traffic conditions vary depending upon the season and when cruise ship passengers are arriving or departing. State Road 401 provides access for goods movement and commuter traffic for the Canaveral Space Force Station, U.S. Coast Guard Base, and commercial space industry. The study team conducted a detailed marine navigation and vessel survey to determine the number of bridge openings 
that would be required in the future based on the size and type of marine vessels traveling through the Canaveral Barge Canal. This information also provided the basis for the height of the bridge over the canal that would provide the optimum clearance for most common marine vessels. This PD&E study has been conducted by FDOT in coordination with local agencies and organizations that have a stake in this project, including the Canaveral Port Authority and Port Tenants, local marinas, the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization, Space Florida, Brevard County, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the U.S. Navy, U.S. Coast Guard, and U.S. Space Force. During the PD&E study, four alternatives were considered for the State Road 401 bridges. A no-build alternative, where the existing lower-level drawbridges would remain and no roadway or structural improvements would be completed. Three build alternatives that would replace the State Road 401 bridges were developed. The alternatives were a high-level fixed bridge, a mid-level movable lift bridge, and a mid-level bascule bridge or draw bridge alternative. The no-build alternative assumes that no improvements would be made to the three existing parallel bascule draw bridges on State Road 401. With the anticipated future traffic operations, congestion and delays will continue to worsen on State Road 401. Therefore, the no-build alternative does not meet the project purpose and need. Of the three existing State Road 401 drawbridges, one bridge is for northbound traffic and two bridges are for southbound traffic. The bridges provide three minimum 12-foot travel lanes in each direction and minimum two-foot wide shoulders. The existing bridges provide 25 feet of vertical clearance, which is the distance between the lowest member of the bridge and the mean high water level of the Canaveral Barge Canal, and 90 feet of horizontal clearance, which is the distance between the Canaveral Barge Canal bridge fenders. The concepts for the build alternatives were developed with a number of constraints and with design drivers in mind. In addition to traffic conditions and a 75-year design service life, both on State Road 401 and through the Canaveral Barge Canal, the study concepts take into account existing infrastructure, including the bridge house and foundations, utilities and signage, and how the proposed improvements would tie into or affect nearby roadways, such as State Road 528 ramps, Mullet Road, and the cruise terminal entrance to the north. Characteristics of the Canaveral Barge Canal and Canaveral Lock, such as the 90-foot width of the Barge Canal at the bridge crossing, were determining factors for the height and length of the bridge crossing, as were predicted sea levels and marine vessel heights that would require movable bridges to open and cause traffic delays. The high-level fixed bridge alternative, as illustrated on this slide, would provide two high-level fixed bridges. This alternative would provide a 65-foot vertical clearance over the mean high water level of the Canaveral Barge Canal, which is typical of high-level fixed bridges over intercoastal waterways. The existing 90-foot horizontal clearance, which is the distance between the bridge fenders, would remain unchanged for this alternative. The maximum road grade of 6% would require a design variation. The lift bridge alternative would provide two mid-level lift bridges that have a 40-foot vertical clearance over the Canaveral Barge Canal when the bridge is closed, as illustrated on this slide. Based on a marine navigation and vessel survey of marine traffic traveling through the Canaveral Lock, a 40-foot vertical clearance would, over the course of a year, reduce the need for the bridge to be opened and traffic stopped by 76%. When the bridge is opened or lifted, 85 feet of clearance would be provided for taller marine vessels traveling through the canal. Existing overhead power lines next to the bridge currently limit the height of marine vessels to 85 feet. The existing 90-foot horizontal clearance will remain unchanged for this alternative. The maximum road grade for this alternative is 4%. The drawbridge alternative would provide two mid-level drawbridges that have a 40-foot vertical clearance over the Canaveral Barge Canal when the bridge is closed, as illustrated on this slide. 
as with the lift bridge, a 40-foot vertical clearance would, over the course of a year, reduce the need for the bridge to be opened and traffic stopped by 76%. When the drawbridge is opened, unlimited clearance will be provided for taller marine vessels traveling through the canal, except as limited by the existing overhead power lines next to the bridge. The existing 90-foot horizontal clearance will remain unchanged for this alternative. The maximum road grade for this alternative is 4%. In February 2022, the department conducted a public information meeting to present the alternatives. Attendees had the option of attending a virtual public meeting online or in person at the Canaveral Port Authority. 37 members of the public and agency representatives attended this meeting, which featured project exhibits and a presentation. Attendees also had the opportunity to provide comments. The department has continued coordinating with project stakeholders as part of the alternatives analysis process. As part of alternatives analysis, the study team developed this matrix to compare the engineering and environmental features and costs associated with each alternative. Although the no build alternative would not meet the project's purpose and need, it will remain under consideration throughout the evaluation process. This matrix provides a summary of the rankings for the traffic, physical, natural, social, and cost criteria. These rankings are from green being the most desirable outcome to red being the least desirable. For example, in terms of roadway traffic delays and safety, the high level fixed bridge alternative has the best ranking because it provides free flow traffic. From a marine navigational standpoint, the drawbridge alternative ranks highest since it offers no limitation on vessel height. The drawbridge alternative ranks lowest for utility impacts because the size of the abutments may result in impacts to nearby overhead power lines and buried utilities. In terms of effects on the natural and social environment, all three build alternatives are expected to result in relatively equal impacts. From a cost perspective, the no-build alternatives operations and maintenance over the 75-year design life is expected to exceed $80 million because the bridge is more than 40 years old and will require resurfacing and repairs. The high-level fixed bridge has the lowest operations and maintenance costs overall because it does not have the mechanical or electrical components like the lift bridge and drawbridge. The approximate construction costs for each alternative, including cost to construct the bridge, earthwork, roadway, signing, and stormwater drainage components, are $125 million for the high level fixed bridge, $170 million for the lift bridge, and $180 million for the drawbridge. Overall, the high level fixed bridge alternative ranks higher than the lift bridge and drawbridge alternatives when comparing traffic and safety benefits, the level of environmental effects and costs. Based on the results of the alternatives analysis process, ongoing coordination with stakeholders, the department identified the high level fixed bridge as the preferred alternative. Each of the high level fixed bridges would provide three 12 foot wide travel lanes in each direction and 10 foot wide inside and outside shoulders. Since State Road 401 is a limited access facility and there are security concerns associated with pedestrian traffic at this location, neither sidewalks nor bike lanes are proposed. State Road 401 would have a 45 mile per hour design speed and 6% maximum road grade. The high level fixed bridge alternative meets the purpose and need and provides various benefits over the other alternatives. The high level fixed bridge alternative will eliminate vehicular and vessel delays that would otherwise be caused by bridge openings and improves resiliency of the transportation network. This alternative will not adversely affect the Canaveral Barge Canal and Lock and will maintain the existing barge canal width. The high level fixed bridge also results in the lowest construction cost of the three build alternatives and lowest operations and maintenance cost for all alternatives over a 75 year lifespan. Environmental considerations and possible impacts associated with the preferred alternative are important elements of the study. 
The PD&E study has evaluated the potential impacts and benefits to the natural, social and economic, cultural and physical environments associated with each alternative. Avoidance or minimization of impacts to these features is a key consideration in the selection of the preferred alternative. This table summarizes the key environmental considerations evaluated for the selection of the State Road 401 preferred alternative. The project is anticipated to result in 0.09 acres of direct impacts to essential fish habitat and 0.10 acres of direct impacts to mangroves. The project is anticipated to result in a determination of may affect but not likely to adversely affect for eight federally listed species. The project is anticipated to result in direct impacts to 1.18 acres of wetlands. Of these impacted wetland areas, 1.08 acres occur within existing roadway drainage systems. Avoidance and minimization will continue to be incorporated as practical throughout the PD&E design phases. The project will not use any land from the Rodney S. Ketchum Park. The project will result in economic enhancements and mobility improvements by reducing vehicular and marine vessel delays. The project will not result in adverse effects to the Canaveral Lock, which is a historic resource and eligible for listing on the National Register of Historic Places. Temporary driveway closures will occur during construction that affect the driveway access for the Canaveral Locks. While the noise levels for all alternatives are predicted to exceed the national ambient criteria for highway traffic noise, noise levels for the preferred alternative at Rodney S. Ketchum Park will be reduced when compared to other alternatives, including the no-build alternative. There is no feasible or reasonable mitigation available to reduce the highway-related noise to this park. No significant impacts to the natural, social, and economic cultural or physical environments are anticipated to occur as a result of the construction of the preferred alternative. The State Road 401 Bridge Replacement Project is identified in Amendment 1 of the Space Coast Transportation Planning Organization's 2045 Long Range Transportation Plan as one of three projects advanced in February 2022 due to developments in the State Transportation Improvement Plan. Public engagement activities and opportunities for the public throughout the PD&E study have included individual stakeholder coordination meetings, the public information meeting, and this public hearing. After this hearing, we will incorporate public comments and finalize engineering and environmental analysis and documents for the preferred alternative. The final engineering and environmental analysis will be submitted to the FDOT Office of Environmental Management for approval of the location and design concept acceptance, LDCA. The approval of LDCA marks the completion of the PD&E study. The design phase for this project is scheduled to follow the PD&E study and start in 2023. We encourage your input and feedback about this project and there are multiple ways for you to participate. All public comments and questions are part of the public hearing record and every method for providing public comments and questions carries equal weight. All questions will be responded to in writing after the hearing. While comments and questions will be accepted at any time, those submitted by February 11th, 10 days after the in-person public hearing will become part of the project's public record. In-person attendees are encouraged to speak with project team members to ask questions and provide input. To submit a written comment for the public hearing record, please complete a printed comment form and return it to the project staff. You may also provide your comment directly to the court reporter. To learn more about the project, go to www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 444787-1 in the search box at the top right and click go then click on the project name. Public hearing materials are posted on the website now. This concludes our presentation. We'll now enter the formal public comment period for this hearing. All questions and comments will become part of the public hearing record. Please note that the department will respond to all questions in writing after the hearing.